Hey guys, alright, today we are back with another Geography Now video, this time Azerbaijan. I'm going to go ahead and continue through all of the countries, uh, because yeah, that was why I started this series, was to learn about the lesser known countries. Uh, I'm just going to have to suck it up and deal with the lesser views on the lesser known countries. Um, I'm about to sneeze, I'm going to control it. Huh. Now I'm yawning. Okay. Um, you notice a thing that's different. My baby face is back now that I have short hair. I don't know why, but I look several years younger when I get a hair. I also sh I made the mistake of shaving too, so I look even young. I look like a fucking teenager more so than I usually do. Go ahead and guess my age down in the comments below. I'll give you ten seconds to guess. Then. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I am 22 years old. I'm going to turn 23 this year. And I look like this. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, learn about Azerbaijan. We learned a little bit about Azerbaijan, I believe, in the Armenian uh, episode on Armenia. Very briefly, we just know there's tensions between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Let's go ahead and learn about Azerbaijan. All right, we finally reached the last country beginning with an A. And that only took about, I don't know, like three months. <laughs> All right, here we go. Azerbaijan. It's time to learn geography. Now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbaro. I'm learning, you know I'm the, learning the, Let's the, dissect the, the flag. theme. The flag of Azerbaijan is a tricolor banner of blue, red, and green with the white crescent and star Ooh, no, emblem in the no. center. The blue represents Quality. the Turkic heritage of the people, the red represents progress and social democracy, and the green represents the Islamic civilization. The crescent, of course, you would think means Islam, and it does, kind of. However, the Azerbaijanis yes. and Turks will tell you that the symbol originated from the Turkic people and not the Arabs, so the symbol could also refer to Turkic heritage. And the eight-pointed star, some people will tell you that the star represents the eight tribes, like the Dumbuli, Kizil and etc but it actually represents the eight letters of the word azerbaijan written in arabic even oh. though azerbaijan has adopted a latin based alphabet moving on weird a little to make things short, if you look at Azerbaijan's borders, it kind of looks like a crazy bird flying while it's losing <laughs> one big feather. Located in the Central Caucasus region of Eurasia, Azerbaijan is bordered by five other countries. You would think four, but we'll talk about this little guy in a sec. And the mighty Caspian Sea to the east. The capital is Baku, right along... Oh yeah, this does make them connected to, I believe, Iraq, right here. With that little sl sliver. There. Iraq along the coast of the Caspian, and the country is divided into nine regions and one interesting autonomous republic. We'll talk about that soon, but first... Now, as we mentioned in the Armenia video, we did talk about ah, the Karabakh region and how there's a lot of tension and conflict. First of all, do not call it a republic to an Azerbaijani. They will get mad at you. The Nagorno-Karabakh region is not recognized as a sovereign state by any other country in the world, and today it's kind of considered as a de jure region of Azerbaijan, even okay. though Azerbaijanis avoid going there. Also, in the Armenia video, I did talk about the Armenian genocide side which did kind of rough up a lot of feathers with the Azerbaijani and Turkish viewers and so I think it's maybe only fair if I talk about the Azerbaijani side of the perspective the Azerbaijanis will mention fair that's a fair point however the Armenian genocide definitely happened uh, he's not wrong in stating the that. The Hojali massacre in which hundreds of Azerbaijanis were attacked by Armenian troops. It's estimated somewhere around 300 to 600 people were killed during the massacre. Both sides have attacked each other in the conflict. I'm gonna move on yeah, that's a fair point. And yeah, it's smart to move on. Before on. things get a little bit more awkward. Then you have the strange but quirky separated exclave known as the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic in the west, bordered by Armenia and Turkey. Oh, that's Turkey, not Iraq. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My fucking, uh... Geography. <laughs> I'm thinking this was a lot more south than it actually was. Turkey. Oops. By the way, the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic is not a separate country. It is part of Azerbaijan. They don't want to be separate. Remember how in the Armenia video I told you that Mount Ararat was kind of considered the area where Noah's Ark landed? Well, the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic is kind of considered the area where Noah's family lived. This area is the only part of Azerbaijan that has access to Turkey for a very, very narrow eight or so kilometer border along the Araz River. The only problem is, because of the whole border blockade, if someone from Nakhchivan wants to go 
to the rest of Azerbaijan by road, they would have to literally cross over into Iran and drive along the 12 highway paralleling the Araz River all the way to the nearest main crossing at the Milmugan Dam, nearly 50 huh. miles from the technical border of Armenia. And you could probably guess why. And as you can yeah. guess, the Nakhchivan region is another area of controversy between Azerbaijan and, you guessed it, Armenia. Now, although Armenia isn't fighting for ownership of Nakhchivan, essentially this is what each side of the argument is saying. Nakhchivan, stop destroying the ancient Armenian sites and monuments in the Nakhchivan region as a means to erase all the Armenian culture from the area. Those claims are nothing more than just Armenian propaganda based on no actual evidence, and plus those aren't even Armenian. Those are Caucasian Albanian. Oh yeah, well I'm gonna take this to the EU court. Go ahead! I'm not telling you who was right or wrong, I'm just saying this is what they're saying. Let's go back to Baku, okay. shall we? Located on the Absharan Peninsula, or the bird's beak of Azerbaijan, and that juts out into the Caspian, the capital of Baku is not only the largest city and the best harbor in the Caspian Sea, but is a breathtakingly beautiful architect. Ooh, Ooh that's one beautiful. Shit. Actually, uh, back when I was in high school, this would be, when, when did this, six, six years ago now? This guy came to my, I think it was six years. Um, this history teacher that I had, she had a former student that became like a somewhat government official. And what he did was he would pretty much, uh, I can't remember exactly what he did, but essentially what he would do is he would have to learn a new language within like six months or whatever, and then he would go to that nation and stay there for some time and I guess do things. Do, do things for America or whatever. I don't, I don't think he was a... He wasn't a spy. Actually, he probably wouldn't have told us if he was a spy. Um, he may have been a spy. I don't remember. Um, but I remember him telling telling uh, me and all the students that were there with me. Because it was just like a little thing that we went to anyways. Um, and he... He went to Azerbaijan, and I actually, I think this, he used this image, and I think he said he lived, I think it was in one of these glass buildings, one of these glass, I think, I think maybe it was stuff like back there, Not, I don't think it was this tall, but I just remember him saying like he lived in a nice spot, because you know, the government pays <laughs> their agents or their people when they go abroad to live in comfortable those unless they're you know the u.s army or marine then uh, you get to live in like a hut you get to live in a tent a shitty barracks or whatever overseas but yeah wonder with its world famous flame towers completed in 2012 also keep it i think they were i think he said he visited the flame towers or he uh lived in the flame tower i can't remember mind baku has the world's largest kfc Greatest country ever already. Biggest KFC shit. So anyway, the interesting thing though is that Azerbaijan was actually the first Muslim majority democratic secular country in the world. That's a lot of words. World. And they were also the first Muslim majority country in the world to have theaters, operas, and modern day universities. Nonetheless, no, Azerbaijan no. still holds on to its ancient artifacts and historical sites, such as the famous Maiden's Tower and the even more captivating underwater Sabayil Castle, Ooh. known as the Atlantis of the Caspian. They have an underwater castle? I want to go there. But to really understand how this land works, we need to talk about the... Now this is where things get a little interesting because the landscape of Azerbaijan has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. For one, Ooh, the land is about half mountainous fancy. with the Caucasus mountain ranges dominating... Oh my god, half? Oh, fuck the that. north and west so parts mountains. of the country and the Talish mountain range in the south Lakaran region. With Nordic wind patterns streaming down the Caucasus, yet the mild Caspian Sea effect, the climate can be quite drastically opposing depending on where you are. Oh, Azerbaijan shit, yeah. has this kind of strange terrain phenomena in which it has cold alpine mountains right next to these dry subtropical zones right next to the coast in which we... What the f That's like fucking Minecraft. You know how it goes from a jungle to a desert. You can find things like orange and lemon groves and tea plantations, which kind of need a warmer climate to grow in. By the way, Azerbaijanis love tea. They kind of obsess over it. They even made multiple monuments oh, to fuck? tea. But the place oh, where things get really interesting, though, would have to be in the Gobustan region, south of Baku. One of the world-renowned landforms that Azerbaijan would have to be known for would have to be its famous mud volcanoes. About oh, half of all those. the world's mud volcanoes yeah. are found right here in Gobustan. Another cool thing is that Azerbaijan is rich in natural gas and petroleum deposits, which make about 80% 
percent of the economy. And because of this, eighty fucking percent. Oh shit, that's not. Oh. This over time, Azerbaijan has built a mind-bogglingly complex and elaborate yet strikingly mesmerizing system of trestles, pipelines, and causeways that Holy connect shit. the oil yeah. reservoirs offshore in the middle of the Caspian. In fact, in 1949, Azerbaijan actually built the world's first offshore oil platform in Neftishlari. Speaking of countries of the oil developing world, let's talk about. Now, very few people actually understand what an Azerbaijani is, let alone where they came from or even how to even pronounce Azerbaijan. We'll discuss more about that in a bit, but first, Azerbaijan has roughly nine and a half million people or huh. roughly the same size as Sweden, and ethnically, huh. it's quite homogenous with 91% of the people yeah. identifying as ethnically Azerbaijani and the remainder of the 9% minority coming from a slew of other nationalities and okay, people groups, other. the yeah. largest populations coming from Russians. I was, I was going to say Russians or Iranians would be... That, that's majority of that other lesgins talish and believe it or not armenians however that's more in reference towards the armenians living in the nagorno karabakh region as it's pretty much impossible or incredibly rare to find any armenian living anywhere else in azerbaijan but who are the azerbaijanis okay. some people will tell you that they are descended from the persians others might tell you the caucasian albanians not to be confused with modern day albanians that's a completely different thing well Oh, what the fuck? That's confusing. The general consensus is that the Azerbaijani people today are Turks or Turkic people. Not to be confused with Turkish people from Turkey, although they are very close cousins. Yeah, in the world of geographical sociology, a lot of things sound like other things, but they aren't exactly the same things as those things. Yes. This means that the Azerbaijani language is very close to the Turkish language, and people can travel interchangeably Bahaba. between both countries and relatively Bahaba. understand each other. It's like Spanish and Portuguese. Now, what's really interesting yeah, is that Azerbaijan that is sense. one of the few Muslim Shia majority countries in the world. They also have a very oh. interesting culture dynamic in which the majority of people identify as culturally Muslim rather than consistently devout and observant Muslim. This type of social oh. coherence really permeates throughout the population of the country as it's very That's noticeably secular in the way how it operates. Women are allowed to wear whatever they want and are not required to wear hijabs or bur- So it seems very, I guess, I guess the term to put it then would be, at least in comparison to its closest Islamic neighbor, Iran, uh, Azerbaijan seems very westernized. Like, also, if you even look at the clothing, these are very, like, western styled. Like, this is very western. Like, very, like, American culture style type clothing. Religious freedom is allowed. All right, well, moving on. To put it simply, friends. Azerbaijan has a long, long history of friends, but also some surprising new people that they just started to kind of click with. Today, Azerbaijan has diplomatic relations with over 160 countries, oh, mostly nice. centralized in Europe and Asia. Azerbaijan's immediate neighbors to the north and south, Georgia and Iran, have always had cordial relations with Azerbaijan and have nice. open borders and trade agreements. When it comes to Russia, though, things are a little hit or miss. Yes, as a former Soviet state, Azerbaijan does have ties to Russia, and they have been working on their diplomacy and partnerships. However, most Azerbaijanis disapprove of the relations with Russia, mostly because they are more supportive of Armenia in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and even took part in fights like the Hojali massacre. Oh. Pakistan is kind of like the fangirl of Azerbaijan. Pakistan cheers for Azerbaijan and recognizes their side of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and has even gone so far as to even unrecognize Armenia as a state. Strangely <laughs> enough though, Azerbaijan what? is actually one of the few Muslim majority countries that actually gets along pretty well with Israel. They so was not expecting this twist of events. Provide Israel with fuel and Israel provides them with agricultural and technological assistance. The Jewish community has lived peacefully within Azerbaijan for over 15 Okay, you know what, that explains it. 100 years. Persecution was virtually unknown to the Jewish community in Azerbaijan, which also served as a safe haven for Jews fleeing from the Holocaust. And finally, we get to Turkey. Turkey, as you can probably guess, is without a doubt Azerbaijan's best friend. Despite the Sunni hey, Shia difference, they have the closest ties culturally, linguistically, and diplomatically. Turkey also supports Azerbaijan in nearly all of their disputes and conflicts, like a proud older brother. There's a saying between them, the two of them are one nation, two countries. In conclusion, I can guarantee you there's pretty much no place like Azerbaijan. I mean, it's a Shia Muslim majority, yet kind of secular country that drinks wine and gets along with Israel and has mud volcanoes. What? Stay tuned, our first country starting with a B, the Bahamas, is coming up next. Hey, all right, that was Geography Now, Azerbaijan. I hope you guys enjoyed. I certainly did. This was, this was well-paced. Pretty good. Um, I don't, I don't, 
as I, as I said, like, never used to go into these videos. Um, some videos, I feel like they need to be longer. Others, I feel like they're perfectly paced. They're at the right length. I think this is one of those videos that falls under the whole, yeah, it's a good length. Nine minutes was plenty of time for this video. I don't think they need more. Of course, you know, perhaps you could squeeze in more information, but I don't think it's necessary. Uh, so yeah, that was Geography Now, Azerbaijan. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.